Hello, I'm Dr. Mikey Mewborn, and this is Leadership Development. Today, we're looking at the topic, Enhance Self-Determination. It is so important for employers or pastors or leaders and companies to empower their people to do better at their jobs. Now, how do you do that? Well, you got to ask the right questions and you got to give opportunities for them to be empowered. And so we're going to talk about some of those things in today's lesson. It's good to be with you. Let's begin our study. Hello and welcome to Leadership Development. Today we're looking at the topic, Enhance Self-Determination. It's so good to be with you. Let's begin our study. I want to start by talking about a quote by Kuzis and Postner. It reads, We become most powerful when we give our own power away. Now this carries a deeper meaning than just delegation. It's not giving somebody opportunity to share their skill set or an opportunity for someone to gain power. But what you're doing is you are empowering them to do a better job. You're letting them have more ownership of it, have more uh, say-so, more buy-in. The idea there is that they are being unleashed instead of just directed. They're opening up to more possibilities and it's going to give them confidence. It's going to give them courage to go forth and to create a better, better position or to do their job in a better way. So think about this quote, we become most powerful when we give our own power away. It's unleashing the power that's already there and letting people rise to expectations and beyond. And so this is a great quote for us to look at. Now, uh, I want to say this, the best leaders gain power by giving it away. And that comes from the website, the globalandmail.com uh, website. And there's some great points in this article that I think are worth mentioning. Where we are going, people need to know the vision. How will we get there? The strategy. How will we conduct ourselves, the organization's values or core values? And then the writer, Hugh Arnold, said this, Empowerment can actually lead to chaos if it is not accompanied by clarity from the leader regarding vision, strategy, and organization's core values. Now, what we're talking about here is letting people in on the vision, and the strategy and the core values and letting them have a place at the table to not only discuss these things, but to help get the vision, strategy and core values into the workplace as well as to the consumers. And so if you can replicate this model or um, this work or empower others to do it, it's going to make a better corporation. So this is a wonderful article to talk about that. And I think it's helpful for all of us to see how we can empower others. Leaders must ensure self-leadership. People need to feel empowered. Teach others to embrace the following attitudes. Yes, I can do it. It's wonderful if people can take that attitude on. Uh, giving them a task that might seem a little unusual to them, but helping them understand, yes, they can complete the task. Yes, I can make a difference. If you can instill that into a, an employee or a, a servant within a church, you're going to make a huge difference in the church or the organization. It's going to change everything. If they believe that they can make a difference, and then I am not dispensable. This is the idea that a person realizes that they're not dispensable. Someone can't just come in and take their job. Instead, they realize, hey, I play a vital role to the success of this corporation. And so that's a big point. Many employers make the mistake of telling their employees that they are dispensable. This comment is a threat more than a motivator. Leaders must empower others, not threaten their jobs. And I think it's important for us to, to take note here that we must motivate people and empower people with uh, leadership and determination to let them know they play a vital role in the corporation. And if we don't do that, but instead we we hold our employees down or a servant, a volunteer down and say, hey, you're dispensable, we're treating them as if they're, there's nothing special about them. But instead, that hurts the individual, and it hurts the corporation. It doesn't help it. So we need to be careful to motivate people and not threaten them. I love this, this quote here. Entitled to nothing 
empowered to everything. It's the idea that we don't just deserve something because we exist, but instead we're empowered to go and, and really accomplish what is there for us to accomplish. It's a wonderful quote for us to think about and not only just to embrace, but to apply to our everyday lives. Provide choices for workers. Now, this is great because it helps us understanding what's needed for workers to succeed or to thrive in the workplace. Choices build commitment. The more empowered a person feels, whether it's an employee or a volunteer, the more buy-in they actually have, the more committed they are. That also results in building character. When a person has choices, they feel like what they're about to say really matters for a corporation. And a person with a little bit of character already is going to work harder at creating wise choices and being a steward of that company because what they said or what they chose really does matter. And so they see the, va the value that they bring is bigger from a company standpoint. And then choices build confidence. When a person gets to make choices for a corporation, that builds confidence for them to do other things. It builds charisma. So the more confidence that we have, the more charisma we have, and the more ownership we have to go out and do more. And then it builds compassion. And here's why. When I see that my choices are making a difference in the world, it's going to put me in a... Um, in a place of caring for others. We see this with many of the people that helped build America. If you think about the Rockefellers or the Vanderbilts, a lot of them later in life decided after they made their millions and billions of dollars, they decided, I want to give back. Now, why? Because they realized that they could make choices that would help other people. And so as they gathered their great wealth and income and, and of course, accomplished um, much in this world, what that did was it built inside them, hey, I want to do a lot in the, in the realm of philanthropy. And so they started to give their money away and they saw it as being compassionate because they knew that they had arrived in a sense and now they wanted to help other people do the same thing. So it's important to look at this, how choices build many other areas. I saw this book and I thought it was very helpful when talking about providing choices for workers. Look what it's entitled. Don't give in, give choices. And we're talking about winning your child's cooperation. Now, if you have ever worked with children, you know that just telling them to do something doesn't always work. What you have to do is give choices. What would you rather do? And what that does is it empowers the child and empowers them to own a decision and to go out and do something. And it takes them off of the selfish attitude that they might have and gives them a focus. Look what I am choosing to do. This not only works for children, but it also works in, in corporations. It works in businesses and churches alike. When we give people the opportunity to choose, they will embrace it. And then they'll go forth and take that, um, that choice and own it and then go forth and accomplish great things. So wonderful way to look at it. Next, we see resources, responsibility, and results. The following questions are helpful for us when we're looking at the idea of enhancing self-determination. What is needed? Ask employees or volunteers, what is needed? What do you need? How can you work more efficiently? What resources would help you? Are you utilizing your skill sets? Do you need more training in an area? These questions are extremely helpful when working with employees. Or, or volunteers. Here's why. Because when we ask employees or volunteers what they need, they're quick to let you know. And by you responding to that and helping them, what's going to happen there is that they're going to feel that they're part of the decision-making process. And when they see, see that they're part of bringing in resources and developing responsibilities, it's going to create results that's very much needed in a co uh, corporation. I love this cartoon here. What if 
and I know this sounds kooky, we communicated with the employees. Isn't that a great question? Of course it is. It's a great question because the idea there is if we do work with our employees, we're going to develop things that are wonderful for the company. And you're going to receive more cooperation with employees and volunteers. So a wonderful way to look at it. Next, give alternatives. I thought this was a great thing. And you got to listen to people to be able to do this. Create a culture of decision making. Give opportunities for people to share ideas. So give them opportunities to do that. Maybe it's through comments, a comment section on a survey or something like that. Boardroom discussions. Set aside some time in a boardroom discussion for people to be able to give their ideas and their thoughts on certain subjects. Open communication through email, text, and phone calls. So make sure that that communication is open. We've talked about some of these things in the past. Give ample time to good choices ideas, not positions of power. Sometimes we find that people that are in a higher position get most of the opportunity to talk and other people in lower positions are even afraid to speak up because it might go against someone in a higher leadership position. What we need to do is open up discussion for all levels at a certain point and not just expect those in a higher position to speak to an issue in a corporation. Instead, open it up for all people. And this will be helpful to creating a great culture in a corporation or a church or whatever it might be, um, but it'll also empower people in the same way. I've got some quotes for you that I think are very relevant to this topic. Never give people choices you don't want them to make. And what this is simply referring to is the idea that people ha already have a lot on their plates. People have a lot of responsibilities in their jobs. And usually people find themselves working within their skill sets. And so if that's what they're doing, if we just open up the communication and give people choices in areas that's not within their expertise, they might speak to it, but it might have them chasing rabbit trails, which can bog down a corporation. And so what we need to do is work within our wheelhouses and we need to kind of fine tune those areas and listen to people, but also make sure that people are that are within a certain area are speaking to that area. Because if we just open it up to everybody yet, there are people that are not trained in those areas. We might get all kinds of comments that are not relevant to um, the task at hand or the decisions that are being made. And so we need to really help out with that and, and look at that. I think this is an interesting quote for us to consider. Now, Also, here's another one. When you give people too many choices, it makes them hesitate and not buy stuff. I think this is important for consumers, but I also think it's important for the workplace and employees, employers. Here's why. Because when we give people too many choices to make, whether it's a responsibility type of choice or if it's something that's going to change the culture of an organization, what we're doing is bogging them down. And what we're doing is we're, we're putting too much out there that they're not able to focus on what they need to focus on. And so I think this is an interesting quote for us to look at as well and, and helpful for us in the realm of um, enhancing self-determination, those types of things. And our last quote of the day is, we don't get power from our stars and our bars. We get our power from the people we lead. Now, this is a great quote for us to look at because it helps us to see that it's not the accolades. It's not the trophies that we have that give us power. It's nothing like that. It's really coming from the people that we are leading, the ones who are following us, the ones that we are pouring into. And that's where we're seeing the power replicated. That's where we're seeing the power go forth. So great quote for us to end on today. Well, this has been the lesson about enhanced self-determination. So good to be with you. God bless you. Bye-bye. All right, that concludes our study today about enhanced self-determination. As you can see, it is important for people to empower their employees 
or their volunteers in certain areas. Give them a voice at the table. Give them opportunities to flourish. Let them uh, have a say in certain areas. So if we do that, we will empower employees and we'll see our corporations, our churches, our nonprofits really succeed in so many different ways. It's good to be with you today. God bless you and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.